just fooling around, just remembering. Just remembering. I forget what these songs are. I've really got to learn them again. Leonard Cohen has glömt sina gamla sånger. Han har inte spelat det på 12 år. Nu sitter han hemma i sitt västlehus och prövar att spela. På de jag så gärna vill det. Yes, yeah, if it be your will, I, I, I don't remember it. And I have to learn it. Det finns inga vågor här. Men om du vill så finns det det. I've been blessed with amnesia. I hardly remember anything of the past, you know. I don't have any good memories or bad memories. Leonard Cohen säger att han har välsignats med glömska. Att han inte minns någonting. Do you want some of this? Shall I cut you a piece? Yes, yes. What, what do you feel like? A little bit of everything? Hon vill ställa frågor och få honom att minnas. Men han hade varnat henne i ett mejl. My memory isn't all that good. My life has always felt the same. One day bleeds into another. It's been a lot of sunlight. And then just uh, working. That seems to be the, the inner voice seems to be saying, make something. Den inre rösten säger, skapa något. Något vackert eller viktigt eller oviktigt. Bara skapa något. Dagarna flyter ihop och livet har alltid känts likadant. Vet aldrig när den ena morgonen börjar eller när nästa kväll slutar. Bara några få minnen är tydliga. När dina barn föddes och första gången du stod med gitarren på en scen. From this broken hill all your praises they shall ring If it be your will to let me Yes, my daughter. What is it? How are you, sweetheart? Forget it, darling. Is is Daniel here? He's at your store? Okay, sweetheart. Thanks a lot. Speak to you later. Bye. Those aren't my daughter's dogs. Mm. Those are the neighbor's, the naughty neighbor's dogs. Your dogs are the nice ones? My dogs are the nice ones. Här finns ingen strand, ingen måne över havet. Bara en villa förort utanför Los Angeles. Små trädgårdar, lekande hundar. En dotter i källarvåningen. Och Leonard Cohen, 71 år. Ödmjuk, smal, knappt 1,80. I grå kostym och vit skjorta. What were you like as a young man? Men hur var han förr när han var en ung poet? What was I like? As a young man, I don't know. I, uh, I had a, a, a calling. I wanted to be a writer. From very, very early time, I just knew I was going to be a writer. And it was a writer not in a popular culture. On the contrary, it was a very, it was a, it was a writer whose allegiance was to, to writers that were already dead. Att skriva, alltid skriva, skriva för de gamla stora poeterna. Vara en av dem. I just wanted to be one of those guys that did that kind of thing, you know. And 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 my feeling was if if I did those things with the with the kind of integrity and uh, the gift would be given me, that I wouldn't have to worry about my life. There would be money. There would be women. Not in any abundance. I mean, there'd be enough for me. I was born like this. I had no choice. I was born with the gift of a golden voice And twenty-seven angels from the great beyond They tied me to this table right here in the Tower of Sound I've never had much to say, so I'll just keep working on something until something arises that is better than me. 
better than my thought. Aldrig haft något val, aldrig gjort ett riktigt val. Livet bara bredde ut sig på egen hand. I was born like this. I had no choice. Alltid samma sak. Skriva en sida, avsluta en sång. There's nothing like ending something. You know, like a song or a book or a record, you know. There are periods when you don't believe you're ever going to finish it. it. Things are just not going well. Do you have any plans of making a new record with your own voice on it? My boy, yes, I, I, I'm just starting it now. I have high hopes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I need 10 songs, something like that. You know, I have to fill up 50 minutes. Uh, and you want it to be good. So I, I'm going to give it a try. Hon ville föra honom tillbaka till en ö i Grekland. Hade gjort en dokumentär om Cohens gamla flickvän Marianne, hans norska musa. Hon som han mötte på den grekiska ön Hydra och gav sången So Long Marianne. Hon hade tagit med sig dokumentären på CD och en engelsk översättning. Would you like to listen to the beginning of the sure, let's hear it. Hon ville att han skulle få höra sin stora ungdomskärlek berätta och få honom att minnas. That's the script. Thank you. Quit loud. Och skulle hämta flaskevatten och mjölk. Och han står i dörröppningen med solen bak sig och då ser du på ansiktet, du ser bara konturerna. Och så hör jag en stämmen som säger: Would you like to join us? We're sitting outside. Men jag husker gott att när vi när ögonen mina mötte hans ögon så kände jag det genom hela kroppen. Det vet du vad är. I remember her now. She's terrific. It is her way of telling a story, and I, I, it's just delightful. There wasn't a man who wasn't interested in, in Mariana. There was no one that wasn't interested in, in approaching that beauty and that generosity. She was a traditional Nordic beauty. The, that was indisputable, but, but she was also very kind. And she was one of the most modest people about her beauty. You know, looking at it from a distance of, uh, you know, 40, 45 years almost, I, I see how, how very rare those qualities are. And she, and she just knew things about, about the moment, about graciousness, about service, about hospitality, about generosity. And she had that other side too, where she'd drink wine and, and dance and, and, and become wild and, and, and beautiful and threatening and dangerous, you know, if you were a man with her. You're hungry now, darling. Mm -hmm. um, we've just been talking so much, so I thought we have the opportunity to finish my cake. Yeah, have a little. Mm -hmm. Mariana doesn't know, but this is her cook's group. I mean, we got this one together. Where is it from? I think it's, I don't know, but it looks Norwegian. <laughs> oh. 
This isn't a very good wine, but it's okay. There you see, you have good memory. You can recall. Yeah, I can come up with this stuff if you yeah. ask me specifically. You've given many interviews during the years. Not for a long time. I haven't given any interviews for a long time. Inte gett intervjuer på länge. Säger att han inte minns. Att han inte är intresserad av det som har varit. Men allt som är värt något bevarar han i minnet. Hon ville tala om det som hade varit. Han tror på kraften i ögonblicket. The cordiality of the moment is much more important than the than the content. But you know, I accept that I can't really rise to the occasion. It's just the way it is. It's not exactly a lie what one is saying. It's just not deep enough. Tycker det är svårt att formulera sig sant om det som varit, men han försöker. You know, we're we're in this together. You know, I, I want to make it as good as mm. as we can. I, I just invite Daniel. Daniel, do you have any wood? Uh, listen, Mrs. Leonard, in case you didn't know. How are you, man? Good. Um, if you'd like to come up for Shabbos dinner tonight, you're most welcome. There's a few people coming up. Cohen bjuder in gäster till fredagens shabbatmiddag. So come up around 6.30. You can make yourself a drink. And Familj, you, vänner, you know traditionell judisk mat. Okej, okay, men. Later. I don't, I don't know what I could play for you. just come to the realization that I you know, couldn't make a living. I had expected that money would come just ordinarily, not great amounts of it, but I thought if I if I wrote well and books were published, and they were, that there would be enough to to finance the next book. I had, you know, always played songs. I'd always been interested in music and played music never professionally so i was beginning a a musical career for which i thought i was totally unsuited i i i, I didn't play guitar well i didn't sing well i i thought my lyrics were okay my tunes were good i thought i had a voice but i thought it was written i thought it was a written voice so i never thought of presenting that voice on a stage I was testing out the possibility of being a singer. You can fit it in somewhere, right? Yeah. Musik från den senaste skivan Leonard Cohen har producerat fyller rummet. Musik så ny att den ännu inte är utgiven. So you tell me when you've had enough. Otherwise we'll just sit and listen to it. Cohen's texter om livet och kärleken. Anja Nai Thomas mjuka röst. Looking back to San Francisco Wearing my blue Chinese dress Yellow jacket with padded shoulders, smoking so brownie cigarettes. How has love changed throughout the years? Har förändrats genom åren? I never thought I was very good at it. 
you know. I, I had a great appetite for the company of women and for the sexual expression of of friendship. You know, I wasn't very good at the things a woman wanted. You know, I don't, I don't know if any men are. I mean, I, I wanted that immediate affirmation of the, what can I call it, just of the, the possibility of escaping from the sexual loneliness, the pure loneliness of living with an appetite that, that you couldn't ever satisfy. So that, that, you know, drives everybody crazy. That drives all men crazy. So, of course, it drove me crazy too. So, you know, uh, that's what I wanted. And uh, so it seemed to be that I, that that's all that I wanted. A anything after that, I was ready to negotiate. And I was very fortunate because it was the 60s. And that possibility was very, very present. And for a tiny moment in social history, there was a tremendous cooperation between men and women about that particular item. And so I was very lucky that, that my appetite coincided with this very rare, what, religious, social, I don't know what you'd call it, some kind of phenomenon, you know, that allowed men and women, boys and girls we were, to come together in that kind of union that satisfied both the appetites. For we are driving most carefully home Down roads that are floating and veiled The golden gate, it's still gold, it's still great Nobody's drawn So, so soft and deep, and you know, it's just you just live in it. Mm. But your lyrics about love, they have changed from in the '60s till the '80s till so tonight. Today. Uh, yeah, well, yes, but I, I, as I say, I don't know what the changes are, and I don't know what they signify. I don't know where it, what is happening. I'm trying to find out. <laughs> I don't care what's happening, to tell you the truth. So something is happening, as Dylan said, but you don't know what it is, do you, Mr. Jones? So I, that, that's the way I feel. I'm not interested in, in the explanation, even my own. I know that the past produces the present and the present produces the future, but I have no interest in the past, and I, I have very little interest in the man I was then. It doesn't present a mystery to me. It doesn't present a puzzle to be solved. I just feel I embody it, you know. Do you want something to drink? Some wine, some aquavit, some... Oh, let's see. I love you in the morning, our kisses deep and warm, your hair upon the pillow like a sleepy golden stone. Marianne and I were in, in a hotel in Piraeus. Tillbaka till 60-talet. Marianne och Leonard på ett enkelt hotell i Piraeus. Yeah. We were both on 25. Now it's come to distances and both of us must try. We had to catch the boat back to Idra. We got up and we got a taxi. And I've never forgotten this. And it, it, nothing happened. We were just sitting in the back of the taxi with Mariana, lit a cigarette, you know, thinking, I'm an adult. I'm with this beautiful woman. We have a little money in our pocket. That feeling, I think I've tried to recreate it hundreds of times unsuccessfully. 
just that feeling of being growing up with somebody beautiful that you're happy to be beside, you know, where all the world is in front of you, where your body is suntanned and you're going to get on a boat. Vi satt i solen, vi lå i solen, vi gick i solen, vi, vi lyttet til musik, vi badet, vi lekte, vi drakk, vi diskuterte. Det blev skrevet og elsket, og det var ganske flott, vet du, å kunne ha det sånn. I fem år hadde jeg ikke sko på beina, ikke sant? Da han reiste tilbake til Montreal, så gikk det ikke lang tid før jeg fikk et telegram. Have house. All I need is my woman and her son. Love, Leonard. So what? Yeah. <laughs> I remember her arriving at the airport in her um, fur coat. She had two heavy valises in each hand. I I, I was prevented from entering that area, but I could see her through the glass and she couldn't wave to me because she couldn't lift the suitcases up and she didn't want to drop them she was moving you know so she waved to me with her foot i remember that very very clearly <laughs> excuse me hi sweetheart what are you doing Oh, listen, darling, I'm just in the middle of an interview. Yeah, I'll speak to you later on tonight. Okay, darling, bye. Did you feel that love was risky sometimes? Risky? Yeah. It's uh, dangerous, <laughs> never mind, you know. It's fatal. <laughs> it's a risky business. <laughs> I had to go crazy to love you. I had to go down to the pit. I had to go crazy to love you. I had to let everything fall. I had to go crazy to love you. Had to go down to the pit. I had to be people I hated. I had to be no one at all. Tired of choosing desire. I've been saved by a blessed fatigue. The gates of commitment unwired and nobody trying to leave. That's the way I describe certain moments now in that in that process. Thanks for the dance. Thanks for all the dances. It's been hell, it's been swell, it's been fun. Thanks for the dance. Thanks for all the dances. One, two, three, one, two, three, one. Thanks for the dance. I'm sorry you're tired. The evening has hardly begun. Thanks for the dance. Try to look inspired. One, two, three. There's a rose in my hair, my shoulders are bare, I've been wearing this costume forever. This is brisket, a friend made for me. Det luktar mat i Leonard Cohen's gamla vitmålade kök. Han förbereder kvällens shabbatmiddag. Gästerna kommer om ett par timmar. Yes, kind of traditional. Cohen's gamle vän Eric kommer in och luktar i grytorna. Oh, nice. Hey, 
big feeling. Uh, How you doing, bro? I stuff like this uh, How does this go? That's Mariana's. Oh, wow. And That's Mariana's And it makes open cool things. It's the best opener I ever... Yeah. I, I'm very grateful when the kids or my friends come on a Friday night and, and I know what the form, you know, of the of the meal is going to be and I know what the tone is going to be and it's very, so for that reason it's very relaxing. Leonard Cohen trivs bäst hemma. Tycker om när det inte händer så mycket. Han har inte turnerat på 13 år. Han var ett vrak efter den senaste turnén med över hundra spelningar. I was reckless at the end of it because I started drinking an enormous amount of red wine just to get on stage. And it wasn't that I wanted to be drunk, it was this particular wine and the music went together perfectly. And, uh, you know, after I had a bottle or two, I really wanted to sing. I, I, I started with a few glasses and then it was a bottle and it was two bottles. By the end of the two, I was drinking three bottles of wine before I went on stage. I, I don't think I, anybody ever knew I was drunk. I don't think I was drunk. In fact, I know I wasn't drunk because I, I can't play when I'm drink, when I'm drunk. At the end of the tour, it's like you're being dumped into a desert, and you don't, you know, you don't remember, you know, where your house is, you know, or where you, what you did with your driver's license, or if you still have a car, or or a girlfriend, or a wife, or children. I mean, just you're just, you know, lost. It's cold. Sliten efter turnén. Över hundra konserter och sen var det över. Som att bli dumpad i öknen utan att veta vad du har gjort av ditt körkort. Eller om du har en bil eller en flickvän eller ett hus. Ingenting kändes viktigare än att dra sig undan världen. Leonard Cohen gick i kloster. Jag didn't know what else to do. And nothing seemed to be as urgent as studying these matters blev munk och tjänade sin buddhistiska lärare Roshi som han mötte och fascinerades av för nästan 40 år sedan. So I, I, I moved up to the mountain and, uh, and after a while I became ordained uh, as a monk. I mean you're doing it for a reason. It isn't just you know to build up your muscles. It's not just a macho exercise. It's to um, kind of cook your mind so that you can hear what he's saying because you can't hear what he's saying if if you're all full of yourself. So there you get so tired that you can't pretend. And that's all a monastery is, is a place where they make you so tired that you give up pretending. You know, I never stayed in show business. You know, I, I, I guess I, I should have. You know, if I if I had wanted to really establish a, a certain kind of career, but I didn't have any appetite for that sort of thing. It didn't. You know, I, I always wanted to go back to a little room in Montreal, or go back to my house on Idra, or just stay in that corner where you're sitting. Skivor, turnéer, så tillbaka till ett tyst rum, tillbaka till ett litet rum. The light came through the window. shipwrecks like everybody else's life and you mess up and it collapses whether it's with a woman or yourself or your own mind or your confidence or whatever it is it it goes it, it happens to everybody 
Men så kraschar man mot verkligheten och livet havererar för dig som för alla andra. För det här livet är skapat för att slå dig till marken. Ingen kan besegra det. So, you know, that happens to you and and then it gets kind of tricky because sometimes the collapse is so thorough that it it um it destroys your capacity to work. Uh, if you're lucky, you can somehow protect just that tiny little corner of your life from complete destruction. Everybody experiences this because this life is designed to overthrow you. Nobody masters it. I'll try to say a little more I'm very happy when my life is uneventful and I don't have strong feelings about one thing or another. It didn't used to be like that. No, it no, it didn't used to be like that. It, it was a, a very much a sense of of struggle and not defeat actually, but weariness, weariness of the struggle. After a while you just get tired of your own <laughs> of your own drama. Trött på sitt eget drama, trött på att allt var en kamp, alltid på väg. Hur var det att turnera när sonen och dottern var små? Um, there was no problem. I, I always knew they were well taken care of. I was always escaping, anyways. You know, I mean, a, lo- a large part of my life was escaping. Whatever it was, even if the situation looked good, I had to escape because it didn't look good to me. So it was a selfish life, and uh, but uh, it didn't seem so at the time. It just seemed a matter of survival. Uh, you know, I guess kids suffered and people close to me suffered because I was always leaving. Not for very long, but. You know, I was always trying to get away. I've been listening to all the dissension. I've been listening to all the pain. And I feel that no matter what I do for you, come back again But I think that I can heal it But I think that I can heal it I'm a fool but I think that I can heal it What makes you really happy today? Well, I have a little drawing in here. It it says, it says, uh, only one thing made him happy. And now that it was gone, everything made him happy. So that's, that's pretty close. I feel tremendously relieved that I'm not worried about my happiness. There are things, of course, that make me happy when I see my my children well, when I see my daughter's dogs, a glass of wine. But what I'm so happy about is that the background of discomfort, of distress, has evaporated. It's not that the emotions don't come, it's just that the background is clear. Before it was all one piece, it, it was very dark. A sense of things being deeply not right. And, you know, by the grace of God, 
that feeling has evaporated. So I can feel real sorrow now. It's not just the sorrow that emerges from the sorrow. It's not just the melancholy that emerges from the melancholy. So when things touch me in a sorrowful way, I can, I can speak about them. And more important, I can feel them. Förr var allt mörkt. En känsla av att saker på djupet inte var verkliga. Nu har den känslan försvunnit. Kan känna äkta sorg nu. Inte bara sorg över sorg. Eller melankoli över melankoli. Åren i kloster på ett berg i Kalifornien gjorde det kanske lite ljusare. That was connected with it, but I don't know what it was. I, I honestly don't know. The religious life generally is, um, it generally strengthens the ego and makes people really miserable because the promise is so cruel. The promise is that you will live a life free from pain. You know, if you get enlightened, you will never suffer again. Well, it's, it's, it's a very cruel promise because nobody can live without suffering doesn't matter how advanced or fulfilled or enlightened an individual is he'll never be free from the sorrows and pains of the moment if he you know if someone steps on his toe he's going to cry out and if someone steps on his heart he's going to cry out is life easier now than oh yes before much easier why is that wisdom no the brain cells associated with anxiety begin to die and you just feel better <laughs> it doesn't depend on meditation or whether you brush your teeth in the morning det finns inga vågor här men om du vill så finns det det vågor som sköljer upp på stranden på hydra days of kindness Greece is a good place to look at the moon, isn't it? You can read by moonlight. You can read on the terrace. You can see a face as you saw it when you were young. There was good light then, oil lamps and candles and those little flames that floated on a cork in olive oil. What I loved in my old life, I haven't forgotten. It lives in my spine. Mariana and the child, the days of kindness. It rises in my spine and it manifests as tears. I pray that a loving memory exists for them too, the precious ones I overthrew for an education in the world. Fredag kväll och middagsbjudning. Oh man, 1967 coming back on us. Wow. Gamla vänner har samlats runt bordet i matsalen. Tygservetter på tallrikarna. Silverbestick. Antika vinglas med guldrand. What a great song. Always been one of my favorites. No one's ever really Well, Rod Stewart. Wow. Cohen hämtar sitt munspel och hans ljudtekniker stämmer gitarren. Where do you find your real pleasure? You know, what kind of table do you have to sit at? Who does your company have to be? You know, to satisfy the criteria that you had when you were young. I mean, does everybody have to be beautiful? Does everybody have to be rich and smart? Do all places have to be, you know, well appointed? You know, does your own life have to be yielding applause and admiration? You know. If if you're lucky the scale gets reduced you still want those things. 
straight face while I cried. Still I look to find a reason to believe. Cohen går till köket för att diska undan. Klockan tio står han i boxershorts och tröja och säger godnatt. Gästerna stannar kvar. Det är morgon i en förort till Los Angeles. Leonard Cohen har städat efter nattens fest. Han sitter i sin blå soffa med fötterna på soffbordet. På bordet ligger ett utkast till en nya diktbok som han ska publicera till hösten. What's your favorite? In the book? Mm. There's some nice drawings. I don't know if I have a favorite. What, what I like about the book is it's It doesn't try to be important. I think that's what I like about it. It pretends to be modest. Pretends to? Yeah, it pretends to be modest. Well, how modest can it be actually when, you know, it's going to be published and people, it's going to, you know, and I'm going to be asking people to pay money for it. Read me something? Uh, okay. I'll try to read you something. I can't really find anything that I that you like? could stand reading. <laughs> uh, there must be something, huh? Well, let's read a little later. If it be your will. Lennart Cohen, som inte vill huxa, spelar sina gamla sånger. If it be your will If there is a choice Let the rivers fill Let the hills rejoice Let your mercy spill On all these burning Hearts in hell If it be your will To make us well And draw us near And bind us tight All your children here of light all dressed to kill and in the night if it be your will if it be your will I remember that one Well, they gave me that one song, you know. <laughs>